I'm at the banks of the Sacramento River in Red Bluff, California, which at one time in the 1850s was the terminus for steamboat navigation. This is where steamboats would travel up from Sacramento or San Francisco and drop off their goods on the wagons. Those wagons would ship off to places like Weaverville, Shasta, and all the other gold fields throughout Northern California, just north of Red Bluff here. But this is not just the navigational terminus. At one point before all of that ever existed here in 1843, Peter Lassen and John Bidwell, you should know those names, Peter Lassen, developer of the Lassen Trail. And yes, that's the same Peter Lassen that is the namesake for Mount Lassen, Lassen National Forest, Lassen County, and a number of different things were named after him. But Peter Lassen and John Bidwell were traveling up here from Sutter's Fort who they both worked for, John Sutter. They were coming up here to the area looking for a horse thief. Somebody has stolen John Bidwell's favorite horse. And so they were coming after that horse thief to retrieve that horse. And they caught up with him here in this area, which is now Red Bluff. But Peter Lassen fell in love with this area so much that he went back to the Mexican government and applied for a land grant in 1843. That land grant was issued in 1844, just south of here in Vina, California, not here in Red Bluff. But the Mexican government, like I said, granted that land grant in 1844. It was 22,206 acres to Peter Lassen. So let's go check out that land grant and what Peter Lassen did with it. Welcome to California Unearthed. I'm in Rancho Bosqueo today, which is in the Vina Plains here in Northern California. This once was Peter Lassen's Mexican Rancho. It was 22,206 acres that he received from the Mexican government in 1844. So we're gonna take a look around here today. This is also where Benton City once sat. This is Benton City number two at this location. Benton City number one, the original was a paper town that is over by the Vina Winery. And uh, we may go take a look at that. But for right now, we're going to go take a look around the more developed Benton City, which was Benton City number two here in the Vina Plains. So come join me as we check out Peter Lassen's Rancho and City. First things first, we need to talk about who Peter Lassen was. And in all my research over the last week, I found the most intensive information comes from a California historic landmark, number 565, which is about five miles south of Susanville in the Honey Lake Valley area. This became a California historic landmark in 1957 and is Peter Lassen's final resting place. But this was not his first final resting place. Peter Lassen was actually killed on April 26, 1859 in the Black Hill Canyon area of Nevada. On November 27th, 1859, the Freemasons went to Black Rock Canyon, Nevada, retrieved his remains, and brought him back to the Honey Lake Valley area to bury him here. On June 14th, 1862, the Freemasons erected a 10-foot stone monument to honor Peter Lassen. That monument can still be seen today, but it was becoming destroyed, and in 1917, was replaced with the taller one that you see next to it in this photograph. But what's cool about this historic landmark is they have a plaque here with different sections in it talking about the life of Peter Lassen. And I want to read from all six of those panels and give you the history of who Peter Lassen was. Lassen's birth. Peter Lassen was born on October 31st, 1800 in Ferrum, Denmark. At the time, Ferrum was a small village about 15 miles northwest of Copenhagen. Peter was 
was the son of humble parents. His mother's name was Joanne Sophie Westengard, and his father was Lears Nelson. In the church records, Lears Nelson was called a farm laborer, day laborer, small holder. As it will be seen, Peter's family name was not Lassen. His father was called Lars Nelson, and it is in honor of him that Peter is called Peter Larson. Larson means son of Lars. At that time, it is quite common among Dutch farmers that the children had their family name in honor of their father's first name. This is called patronymic and is an alteration of family names from generation to generation, making Dutch genealogical studies almost impossible. Anyway, Peter was the son of Lars, and their Therefore, he was called Peter Larson, L-A-R-S-O-N. While living in Denmark, he spelled his name in different ways. In the beginning, he was just Peter Larson. Later on, he spelled his name Peter Larson, L-A-R-S-S-E-N. At other times, he called himself Peter Larson Ferrum. In the passport records of Copenhagen in 1830, one of the public offices simply registered him as P.L. Ferrum. The Larson himself preferred to be called Peter Larson Ferrum when he was living in Copenhagen. Must have been meant as a help for the authorities. Peter Larson was a common name in Copenhagen in these years, and it is obvious that Larson would not like to be confused with other persons. Migration of Peter Larson. We do not know the exact date on which Peter Larson arrived in America. Let us suppose that he landed in the early spring of 1831. Most reports say that Larson arrived in Boston, Massachusetts. Also, his passport had Boston written as a destination. Besides, this town was at that time one of the most important immigrant gateways. In Boston, Lassen got his first impressions of his newly adopted country, America. He must have felt confused hearing all the different tongues, English, Italian, German, Spanish, French, and many more. Lassen soon learned that if he wanted to make progress here, he would have to learn the most important and used language, English. In Boston, Lassen worked as a blacksmith. He may not have liked the big city with the crowds of people of different nationalities because he only stayed there a couple of of months. We do not know why Lassen left Boston. Boston only became one of the many stopovers on his way trying to find the luck. It was after his arrival to America that he changed his name from Larson to Lassen. It was still unknown why he did so. He may have found that Lassen was easier to pronounce and that it sounded better in the American language. Little is known of Lassen during the years 1831 to 1840 when he was moving from one place to another on his way from Boston to California. In his first years in America, he was just among the masses. He was not able to understand the language, still less speaking or writing it. He did not stay very long at the different places on his route. He was still moving on, trying to find new places where he can explore, operate, be effective, have a beneficial effect, and maybe settle. His next stop was Missouri. Lassen settled in a small town which was quite new. His name was Keatsville, and it was located in Charlton County. Lassen must have stayed here for about seven or eight years. Again, Peter Lassen found himself in a small community working as a blacksmith. Peter Lassen became a member of the Masonic Lodge, Warren Lodge No. 74, Keatsville. He liked the idea of brotherhood and was later working hard to start new lodges. It was in Missouri that Peter Lassen, for the first time, met with a certain Mr. John August Sutter. Lassen should later, when arriving in California, receive Sutter's help. Sutter left Missouri in 1838. Lassen sold his land and headed west again. Some other people wanted to follow him and his party counted 11 men, 2 women. The party started from Keithisville in the spring of 1839. The trip was a success, but when the group got to Fort Hall, north of Salt Lake, the two women were so exhausted that it was decided they should stay at the fort. When leaving Fort Hall, Lassen's party was increased by 27 trappers. The route led to a small immigrant station, the Dallas, which already at the time was placed on the southern bank of Columbia River. At this place, some of the trappers left. 
They went by boat down the river till they came to Fort Vancouver. Fort Vancouver was located where Columbia River and Willamette River meet, a little north of where Portland is placed today. From here, the party was heading south, following Willamette River until they came to a small town, Camp Point, which now is Oregon City. Another party coming from California told that it had begun to snow in the Sierra Nevada mountains. It'd be quite impossible to cross over the mountain range. Pierre Lass and his companions decided to stay in Camp Point for the winter. He is now waiting impatiently for the winter to be over so he could reach his goal, California. Lassen in California. In Camp Point, Peter Lassen and his party had been waiting for the winter to be over. Instead of crossing the mountain ranges on their way south, he and six other persons decided to go by ship from Fort Vancouver. A small steamship, Luzanne, from a New York shipping company had landed at Fort Vancouver. On its way back, it would make a stopover in Yorba Buena, which today is San Francisco. Peter Lassen and his party had the opportunity to be on this boat. Lassen had the intent of arriving to California as soon as possible. On the voyage, Peter Lassen had persuaded the captain, Josiah Spaulding, to land at Fort Ross, which was located on the Pacific coast about 75 miles north of Yorba Buena, near Bodega Bay. When Lassen arrived, Fort Ross had about 300 inhabitants. Landing at Fort Ross was done because the traveling companions wanted to make a shortcut to the Sacramento Valley, where they planned to stay at Sutter's Ranch, now Sacramento. Lassen thought the Sutter's Ranch would make a good starting point for himself. When the Luzanne arrived at Fort Ross, it must have been on July 16th or 17th, 1840. The group was welcomed by the people, mainly Russians from the fort. From Fort Ross, a pilot was sent out to the ship and it was sailed on to the nearest harbor, Bodega Harbor, or as it was called at the time, Puente Ross de la Bodega. In 1840, however, California was part of and owned by Mexico. The Mexican authorities would not allow Peter Lassen and his companions to stay. On July 26th, the steamship Luzan sailed on to San Francisco without the men. It must therefore have been either July 25th or 26th, 1840, that Peter Lassen, for the first time, set his foot on the land of California, in spite of what was prohibited for him to do. A few days later, General Vallejo gave permission to the five men that they could stay in California. In the middle of August, the five companions arrived at Sutter's Ranch. This man was an absolute contrast to Peter Lassen. He was Gentile and felt that he was better than other people. No wonder that the common Peter Lassen would not stay too long at Sutter's Ranch. Only two weeks after their arrival, Lassen and one of his companions, William Wiggins, broke away from the Sutter's Ranch heading south. They had a stopover in Yorba Buena, where Wiggins noticed that the town only had six houses. These houses were the beginnings of San Francisco. The two men went on. Route to the West It took Peter Lassen ten years from the time he arrived in Boston to reach California in 1840 and then on to San Jose, which was a big town of 500 inhabitants. He worked as a blacksmith in this town all winter. Lassen became a pioneer when the idea of building a sawmill began to take place in his head. Now Peter Lassen was the supervisor and contractor of his own mill, which became the first working sawmill in California. Lassen wanted to move on and sold his mill to Santa Cruz and returned to the new fort built by Sutter. In the spring of 1843, while Peter Lassen was still working for Sutter, some cattle were stolen by a party of immigrants. So Peter Lassen and some other men, among those John Bidwell, started a trip up the Sacramento River, following a route where very few white people had passed before. No map showing the region was available. So Lassen and Bidwell drew a map. They also gave names to places they were passing on their way. They traveled for several days when they found the part of the immigrants with the stolen animals near where Red Bluff is located located today. Lassen's Bosquejo Rancho. When Lassen returned to Sutter's Fort, he was still haunted by memories of the beautiful scenery in the North Valley. He decided to apply for land and settle there. 
There were no settlements at all in this region, so there would be room enough for Peter Lassen. Soon after, Lassen sent his application for a grant to the governor of California, General Manuel Michelena. The application was filed on October 11, 1843. Peter Lassen applied for a vacant land on the river Sacramento, which is called Basquejo. Lassen knew it would take time before he could expect an answer, so in the meantime, he would try to apply for naturalization again. He knew that this would be a must. The Mexicans had decided that if a man should become a grantee, he should be a Mexican citizen. One year went by, and then on July 25, 1844, his citizenship was stated in Monterey, which at that time was the capital of California. The certificate confirmed that Pedro Lassen, a native of Denmark, having complied with the conditions and requirements prescribed by law for the granting of naturalization letters to foreigners, I have concluded hereby to naturalize the said Don Pedro Lassen by by virtue of the powers confirmed on me by said law. It was signed by Mish Torena. Hopefully I'm saying that name correctly. If I am not, please forgive me. Lassen got his citizenship exactly four years after his arrival in California. Five months later, on December 26, 1844, Lassen's grant was approved by the Mexican government. Lassen got five square leagues of land, which is approximately 22,000 acres. Soon after, Peter Lassen started out from Consumes River with his cattle, horses, and mules. His destination was Basquejo at the Sacramento River. Lassen and his housekeeper, the Dutchman Sergeant, knew that they had to be patient and take their time. When they reached Cordeo, now Marysville, the river had become flooded and they had to wait at least a month before. In February 1845, they were able to continue. Soon after they reached what became Peter Lassen's new home, Lassen's housekeeper soon learned that this nowhere was not what he wanted and he disappeared. Lassen was now the only white man here, living alone among the Indian tribes, only having his herds of cattle, horses, and mules around. To be all alone in this beautiful nature must have made him happy. People who knew Lassen later told that it was his idea to build a town at this spot. Lassen's property had many names. Lassen's Grant, Lassen's Ranch, or the Spanish form, Lassen's Ranchero, are the most common names. It was also called Deer Creek Ranch. But Lassen, obviously, in honor of his new naturalization in a Mexican vassal state, gave it a Spanish name, Basque. Basquejo Rancho. Basquejo means wooded land. So today, we can visualize how the place was looking. Burial of Peter Lassen. In November 1859, almost half a year after Lassen's death, another party with Joe Kitts, Anton Strofe, and John Tutt began a new trip back to Black Rock. The men were going to bring the remains of Peter Lassen's body back to Susanville, and Honey Lake Valley. Lassen was buried outside of Susanville with Masonic honors on November 27, 1859. He was buried under the big tree where he had camped his first night in the valley and where he had wanted that his last resting place should be. Besides, Lassen was buried on his own land. Three years later, on June 24, 1862, a 10-foot monument was erected over the grave. The inscription was as follows. In memory of Peter Lassen, the pioneer who was killed by the Indians, April 26, 1859. Under the inscription, a gun was crossed by an arrow and there was a powdered horn hanging from the gun. The monument was made from volcanic rock from the same area. Unfortunately, the monument was disintegrating by weathering. And on September 20th, 1917, a new monument made of granite was erected near the old one. The inscription on the granite shaft is as follows. Peter Lassen, a native of Denmark, aged 66, killed February 26th, 1859, as it will be seen, both the age and the date on which he was killed are incorrect. Peter Lassen was 59 years old when he was killed, and the murder took place on April 26th, not February. 
February 26th. On May 22nd, 1859, the following statement was given at a meeting of the Masonic Lodge of Honey Lake Valley held in Susanville, resolved that the death of Peter Lassen, the community has suffered. The loss of an enterprising citizen, a warm-hearted friend, a true and faithful brother, and one of the most ardent members of the Brethren of Western State Stars Lodge No. 2 at Shasta, California, of which he was a member. The controversy continues. In connection with Peter Lassen's death, the following question has been raised several times. Was it the Indians who killed Lassen, or was it some white renegades? There has so far been no answer to this question. So the murder is today, as in 1859, still an unsolved mystery. It seems, however, that not all the involved persons believed that the Indians were the perpetrators. On May 20th, 1859, Major F. Dodger, who was an Indian agent and after the murder had to make investigations and to hold inquiries insinuated that it could have been a white man, meaning Lemurus Wyatt, who was the murderer. The rumors that the perpetrator could be white, maybe Wyatt, or one of the four men from Captain Weatherlow's party, whom had been camping only a mile away from the murder site, made the residents from the valley infuriated. One of the men, Captain Weatherlow, protested vigorously and soon after, this insinuation was rejected. If Lassen had a map of a silver mine, this could have been caused for his death. As far as we know today, Peter Lassen had no enemies, neither among the whites or among the Indians. Fairfield quotes that either the Pitt River Indians or some of the renegades from the Black Rock area killed Peter Lassen and Edward Clamper. But if it was not the Indians and not Wyatt or the four men from the other party, who killed Lassen and Clamper? Clamper. Could it have been possible that one, maybe more persons from Susanville had heard about the map locating the Rich Valley Mine and that this person or those persons had sneaked out after Lassen's party? The answer to this bewildering question may be forever. And most of, if not all of the information on this plaque comes from a book called Uncle Peter. There are different page numbers for each section of the plaque. I'm at the new Clairvaux Winery in Vina, California, and the orchard that you see here in front of you is where Benton City Number no. 1 once stood for a very, very short period of time. Basically, it was just really a tent town, paper town that didn't last very long. And also here on property at the winery is evidence of the 18 miles of Peter Lassen's canal system that he designed and built throughout his rancho. And you only see a photograph of the orchard because video is prohibited here at the winery without written permission. In 1847, Peter Lassen laid out his town site with the help from Goldsburg Bruff, who surveyed the town for Lassen. Historian Dave Freeman and his crew actually found Bruff's historic marker put at the center of town to measure out the town site, which was about a mile and a half long, half a mile wide. Lassen named his town site Benton City in honor of Senator Thomas H. Benton of Missouri. Benton City consisted of about a hundred adobe homes in which the adobe mud was manufactured on property at the reservoir. It had a dry mix pit and a wet mix pit. They also produced bricks as well. You can still see where the adobe homes sat throughout the property because there are remnants of red adobe among the landscape throughout the area. These homes were evenly spaced along cobblestone streets that can also still be seen today. In 1847, Lassen would journey back to Missouri with Commander Robert F. Stockton to incite settlers to head west. While in Missouri, Lassen would secure a charter for the very first Masonic Lodge in California, which he intended to establish in Benton City. A spur of the Lassen Trail that crosses the Marysville to Shasty Road went right up to the front door of the Masonic Lodge, which was a two-story wood frame with a half base. Basement. Prior to leaving for Missouri, Lassen deeded over one league or one-fifth of his ranch to his ranch manager, Daniel Seal. 
Lassen returned on October 27, 1848 with a party of settlers and a Masonic charter. On reaching California, the members of the party learned about the discovery of gold on the American River and gave up their original idea and headed out for the gold fields. So the town site of Benton City died suddenly as a result. Although the group of settlers from Missouri did not work out for Lassen, the publicity given to Lassen's colonialization plan attracted others to the territory, including those who founded and established the town of Red Bluff. Most of the residents of Benton City had left town by the 1850s when gold was discovered in the Shasta area. Even the lodge charter was transferred to Shasta, and the only sign of civilization by some time between 1860 and 1863 was a lone hardware store. Peter Lassen was only in Benton City for about six years, but he created a massive compound from 1844 to 1852 when he left Benton City and his beloved rancho. Lassen built a total of 18 miles of canals, four mills throughout California, with two in Tehama County, including the grist mill at Vina and a mill in the Woodson area near Corning. In 1852, due to financial problems, Lassen was forced to sell his remaining interest in his rancho to a German immigrant named Henry Gerke, who expanded Lassen's vineyard and operated a successful wine and brandy business. In 1881, Gerke sold Rancho Bosquejo to Leland Stanford, who created the Vina Ranch. It was the largest vineyard in winery in California, with the vineyards covering 3,575 acres. Leland Stanford died in 1893, and the property was deeded to Stanford University and was sold off piecemeal-wise, with the final 200 acres being sold in 1919. So the property out here in the Vina Plains is private property. So do not try to find this place. This is not public at all. I have been invited here to be able to film the old town of Benton City. And so, like I said, private property, do not trespass. Here in Benton City, there was two wooden structures. There was a house just up the road here, along with the Masonic Lodge. All the other buildings, about a hundred of them that sat here were adobes. And here on the property, they had an adobe pit, they had a wet pit and a dry pit as well. And Peter Lassen built about 18 miles of canals throughout his rancho. And evidence of those canals can still be seen here today. It is really, really cool. So I'm down at one of the canals. Unfortunately, this is not one of Lassen's canals. This is Leland Stanford's canal. Leland Stanford ended up buying the property, but he built a bunch of canals alongside of Lassen's canals. And this just happens to be one of those. And we are just down the ways from Lassen's Adobe and the mill pond. And the mill is just on the other side of this canal. And then Lassen's canal is in that same area, just a little bit farther down. But this is a pretty cool, pretty little area. The dog's enjoying it. Yeah, which we have to say thank you to our other tour guide, Abby. I'm right at the crossroads of Lassen Trail, which is heading right behind me here, and the Marysville to Shasta Road, which is going that direction. And no, I am not selling my soul to the devil here at the crossroads. <laughs> but then over on this side, just to the right and behind the beehives out there is where Lassen's Adobe was located at that he built in 1844. So that was his adobe, and he had a, I believe what Dave Freeman said, a 60-acre garden over here to the left. So this is pretty cool to be able to stand here at the crossroads of the Marysville Shasta Road and the Lassen Trail. This is a pretty cool thing. Uh, take a shot of this road going to Shasta. So here in the Vina Plains, that road right there would take you to Shasta. 
And then the road just to the right here would take you on to the east, eastern United States if you want to go that direction. All right, so that's a trace chain, and that's from an old uh, wagon, wagon part. And it's right here on the uh, road, kind of the crossroads between uh, Marysville to Shasta and Lassen Trail. And Dave found this today. That's pretty cool. And then over here, where you see those vehicles, that is where the Masonic Lodge sat. And so let's go check out where the Masonic Lodge was and we'll find out what that's looking like right now. I'm standing in front of the very first Masonic Lodge here in California. That's right, the very first Masonic Lodge. It is right behind me. It's just a pit now. Obviously, no lodge exists anymore here. But this was built around 1848 by Daniel Seal. And Peter Lassen was in Missouri getting the charter for this lodge. And he brought it back 1848. And so that made this the very first Masonic Lodge. It's the same size as the one in Tehama, just down the road from here. And it's about the same design as the one in Benicia. But this is, like I said, the very first one. And this lasted up until about, man, 18, early 1850s. And the charter was then moved to Shasta. So the Shasta Masonic Lodge that is up in Old Shasta State Park has the charter that was originally from here. And it was the very first charter in California that Peter Lassen brought back from Missouri. And while we're here, we're gonna take a look around the uh, basement here. And we have some guys working in the basement today and doing some excavating, looking for historical artifacts. And then we also have a well. We're gonna go check out the well. It's actually not a well. It is the outhouse for the Masonic Lodge but it looks like a well. So let's go check it out. So this is pretty cool. I don't want to disturb these guys too much, but uh, take a look at that. It's a basement. And they found an old shovel from the mining days. And if you look, there's some concrete there at the end uh, obviously, they didn't have concrete in the 1840s, so this building was used uh, throughout the decades after the 1850s. So let's go look at the uh, outhouse or the well. They call it a well, like I said, but it's actually the outhouse. Oh, that's, don't want to fall in there. But look at all that rock. That's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah, if you did not know that that was here, you could fall right into that thing. <laughs> they were talking about bringing the ladder and climbing down in there. It's a pretty that's a pretty big outhouse. This is an absolutely beautiful day today. Now, a couple other things about this Masonic Hall. Uh, the gentleman behind me, one of them is Dave Freeman, and they found some white marbles here. and. They thought maybe that they had kids or something here, but apparently he talked to some masons and the white marbles were a way of voting. They used the white marbles as a voting method. So I thought that was kind of cool. So the Masonic Lodge also faces east 
as per the Masonic rules, I guess you would say. I'm in Old Shasta. Behind me is the oldest Masonic Lodge in California. Not the first, but the oldest. The first Masonic Lodge, like we just talked about, was in Benton City on the Vina Plains. But when Peter Lassen and the Masons left Benton City in 1852, they took the charter with them and brought it up here to Shasta. So this Masonic Lodge was started in 1853. This is not the original building. The original building was burned in the fire of 1853. And then in 1854, they regrouped and they were put in the building that you see behind me. We're going to go over across the street, look at the plaques. It'll give us a little bit more of the history on this building and on the Masons here in Old Shasta. Plaque reads, Western Star Lodge No. 2, occupied 1854. The oldest Masonic Lodge in the state of California, chartered by the most worshipful Grand Lodge of Missouri on the 10th of May, 1848. This building was dedicated on St. John's Day, the 27th of December, 1854, and has been in continuous use by the Lodge ever since. After the Great Fire of June 14th, 1863, I believe that's supposed to be 1853, when most of the city of Shasta was destroyed, the lodge lost all of its possessions, save as its Missouri charter, and continued to meet in the upper floor of Dr. Benjamin Sherdiff's home, which stood on the hill west of town from 1851 to 1967, when it too was lost to fire. On the 4th of December, 1854, the lodge trustee, purchased the upper floors of this building, the street level being the Norman and Tucker General Merchandise. In 1857, the lodge acquired ownership of the entire building. The Western Star Masonic Hall Association, Inc. owns and maintains this property and also a cemetery founded in 1864. The Shasta Masonic Cemetery located at 11471 Mule Town Road, southwest of town. All right, so I'm out here with Dave Freeman. He invited me out here to film and to take a look at this. He is a fellow historian and contractor here in the area. And uh, I appreciate it, Dave, really do. Thanks a lot. Um, where we're standing right now is where the hardware store used to stand. And Dave was just telling me that this hardware store is here until about the 1860s. And uh, he actually just found a piece of leather from a steamer truck, trunk, just sitting on the ground here. Uh, where'd that go? Well, it's iron, but it had leather. Or had leather. Anyway. So Dave just found that. Right now we are focusing on the Lassen Trail, but we are standing next to the Lassen Trail. Uh, to my right is, uh, over there in the trees, is Lassen's 1844 adobe and mill. Uh, the uh, canals all around here. He's, uh, uh, most people didn't know he was an engineer. And his canals are set at 0.008% of grade religiously. Oh, wow. Whether they're here or um, Rancho Marietta or uh, Greenville or, or whatever. He very, um, very specific on his mm -hmm. terms. And you were telling me earlier that uh, William Ide was here in 1845, and he had a, a sawmill here. Yes, he was here first. Uh, the history books say he was here for a short time uh, and then moved up to Tehama. But he continued to have a presence here. And uh, about a mile and a quarter from here, he has a, um, a Lassen-style uh, Lassen uh, sawmill. And it's a horizontal shaft sawmill. Oh, okay. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. this way in the trunk. And uh, we found evidence of Ide's saw 
Kurfs, which is Marx, mm -hmm. and uh, a male uh, consumnist rig down by you know, Sacramento. Oh, wow. And so he's all over. Cast, the cast iron bearings and fittings here. He a, we found a smelter and a uh, foundry here. And uh, I was providing the wood. Oh, nice. And uh, I had a, he brought a 48 inch saw overland. His, uh, Sarah Ide's barn is in Red Bluff, and we have found the saw curves and we matched the saw curves. Oh, that's cool. So we know. And that was all before he became president, president yeah, of that California. Would have been, that would, he would have started that in 44. Right. And uh, the. Um, that was 46. 46 sorry, 40, yeah, 45. 45 he arrives then... 45, October. Uh, Bear Flag Revolt is uh, 46. 46 June correct. 46. But they were, they were producing. Uh, they all knew each other. Uh, Moon, I, uh, Lassen, Bidwell, Bidwell. Yeah, they all Sutters. knew each other. And they, uh, that group marched on uh, before the Bear Flag, marched on um, San Jose. Oh, okay. Well, wow. it was an oppressive lieutenant governor who was trying to overthrow the governor. And uh, the leader of that was Sutter and Graham. He tried to arrest him, Sutter, but he had a wall around his house. <laughs> but they arrested Graham, who lived down by uh, Santa Cruz. So we found a brick here that was at the hardware store. These are the same bricks that built the Masonic Lodge that I showed you earlier. And those bricks were made about a mile and a half from here, over in that direction, in the Adobe brick pits. We are at our vehicle heading out and we're about a mile from the Masonic Lodge and Lassen's Adobe, but this is all still part of Benton City. The end of Benton City is just over here. So Benton City was a mile and a half long and a half a mile wide. So it was a good distance. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed that episode of California Unearthed. I want to thank Dave Freeman Again. for letting me come out here uh, to Vina Plains. And like I said before, this is private property. Do not come out here. But uh, Dave invited me out here to come film Benton City and Peter Lassen's Rancho. And so I highly, highly appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. If you like the video, smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode.